Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming we found out Warzone is probably getting a new map next year, a new teaser for Stalker 2 launched, the Epic Game Store has a huge bug, and much more. A new map for Call of Duty's Battle Royale Warzone has leaked. It's allegedly called Ural Mountains. This leak sounds legitimate because the Fireteam mode for Black Ops Cold War has two maps and are both located in the Ural Mountains. Fireteam is a mashup of Ground War and Modern Warfare and Warzone's Plunder mode. Players drop in via parachute at the start of a round and fight over uranium used to arm several dirty bombs. The team that hits a certain score or has the most points at the end of the match wins. Throughout a match, players can find killstreaks, drive vehicles like tanks and helicopters, and everyone has the same armor system as you do in Warzone. The mode is kind of hit or miss for most players, but the actual map design is very solid. The Ural Mountains would certainly make an interesting Warzone location. Of course, the question is, how different will the full map actually be? Cold War's two rural maps are very rural. They have smaller buildings and much more open terrain than you'd find on Verdansk. There's also no big urban center with tons of verticality. So Warzone players could be getting a very different experience when the Ural Mountains map launches. As for when it's launching, rumors suggest March 2021. That makes sense considering Season 1 of Cold War ends on February 24th, and there's generally a week or so between seasons. It also happens to be the one-year anniversary of Warzone. It's kind of crazy to think that one of the biggest Battle Royale games out today hasn't gotten a new map for its traditional experience in nearly a year. Rebirth Island might have been added with Cold War Season 1, but it's a copy and paste job of Alcatraz from Blackout and it's also a very different kind of map. Based on Warzone's easter eggs and underlying story, many people were expecting some sort of nuclear event to devastate Verdansk, transforming it into a new map. But the Warzone storyline recently concluded with Captain Price stopping the launch and introducing Soap as the next operator for Warzone. Of course, all this Ural Mountain stuff should be taken as speculation until it's officially revealed. It seems like a foregone conclusion at this point, but you really never know. A new teaser for Stalker 2 finally shows what the game might actually look like. The teaser shows a character walking down the hallway of a dilapidated building with a severe storm raging outside. Visually, it's very impressive stuff. Beyond that though, everything's just a question mark. The game was revealed earlier this year with a gorgeous cinematic trailer. The trailer, however, was likely entirely CGI and not in engine. It also included some very striking callbacks to the original Stalker games. Stalker 2 will be the first official game in the franchise since the 2009's Call of Pripyat. And while Stalker 2 was technically announced in 2010, it's been in and out of development since then thanks to funding issues. The developers launched a teaser site in 2018 to help secure a publisher, and it clearly worked. Since the last Stalker game debuted, several of the original developers went on to work at different studios and made similar games. The Metro franchise is probably the most notable example. In particular, Metro Exodus felt like a real spiritual successor to Stalker with its semi-open world design and non-linear structure. But Exodus is more like Far Cry than Stalker in many ways. Stalker 2 is currently scheduled for launch next year. Speaking of Metro, GOG is currently offering free copies of Metro Last Light to anyone with an account. The giveaway is part of GOG's winter sale and ends on Friday morning. Last Light is the second Metro game and is set primarily in the underground Metro tunnels of Russia. I would recommend playing Metro 2033 first as Last Light doesn't make a whole lot of sense without playing the original game, but then again, getting any game for free is certainly a hard price to argue with. Sony revealed the free PlayStation Plus game for January, and there are some pretty high-profile names on the list. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Greedfall, and Maneater will all be available to PlayStation Plus subscribers. Maneater is unfortunately exclusive to the PlayStation 5, but Tomb Raider and Greedfall are backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4. They're also pretty solid games and worth checking out if you haven't already. Apparently, a bug in the Epic Game Store is causing high CPU usage and temps, and many users have reported it to be a problem for a long time. And while it's often tough to take claims like that at face value, it seems like this time around the complaints are certainly valid. Epic issued a hotfix for the issue after a Reddit post blew up about the problem, and a PC hardware website verified it. The hotfix isn't a full solution, so some users will probably see spikes in usage when idle, but more fixes will likely roll out next year. 
A new mod for Cyberpunk 2077 apparently fixes pedestrian AI to be a little bit less brain dead. The Latinate Crowd Behavior mod is a tweak to pedestrian logic that makes them react to obstacles and players from further away. The mod also reduces how much personal space NPCs need, which leads to denser looking crowds. On top of that, the mod also lets more NPCs spawn at once and prevents them from disappearing if you turn around. Mods like this should give Cyberpunk players hope that CD Projekt Red can iron out its problems. If a simple text file tweak can make NPCs behave more naturally, there's certainly hope that the devs can implement similar fixes. As for that class action lawsuit one of CD Projekt Red investors filed recently, the studio is prepared to vigorously defend itself in court. The suit alleges CD Projekt Red purposely misled investors about the state of the game on last gen consoles to secure funding and that the fallout from the disastrous launch hurt their return. While it's certainly within the investor's right to sue the developers, this lawsuit is standing on shaky ground. CD Projekt Red may have misled investors and players by not showing the game running on last gen hardware before launch, but it doesn't seem like they ever outright lied about it. As for the return on investment, the game has sold 13 million copies since launch, so I highly doubt the investors haven't made their money back and then some. Now before we get into the final story today, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who's been tuning in this year. We know gaming news is different from the content that you might have been used to in the past. It's been incredible to see so many positive comments about the new show and I hope you all stick around in 2021 as we improve the show and expand coverage to more amazing games and stories. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything and also we'll be posting breaking updates on Twitter from time to time so if you want even more news there or other stories stories, check the Twitter feed. Crypto mining has been a controversial topic to say the least for the past few years. Around when Nvidia launched their 900 series GPUs, crypto mining was so popular that retailers couldn't keep up with gamers and miners' combined demand. Since then, the mining scene has condensed somewhat with most mining operations being massive hardware farms run by companies or heavily invested individuals. The shrink in mining was fueled mostly by declining profits thanks to the nature of mining getting harder over time, but apparently the RTX 30 3080 is turning things around. A crypto mining farm with 78 RTX 3080s could be pulling in as much as $154,000 per year, which would be profitable even with inflated pricing on eBay. The mining operation in question is run by one guy in Las Vegas. He reportedly bought all the GPUs on eBay for an estimated total of $59,000. With additional hardware like racks and mounting GPUs and power supplies and of course the power needed to run them, he is still turning a profit. It's pretty crazy to see a consumer GPU based crypto operation turning a profit in 2020. Computer hardware built specifically for mining seemed to be the only profitable means of mining for the past couple years. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in 2021. This is Level Cap signing off.